My favorite place would be there's an, there's an ISKCON temple, um, ten minutes behind my house, uh, that I that I go to pretty often. I used to go about once a week whenever I was feeling stressed, and it's just a great place to go and and relax and sort of just and sit and contemplate. And it's one of it's an it's one of the few places in Bombay where you can have you know just quiet you know just sort of quiet peace. Um, and it turned out uh, I used to go to it when I was a kid and. Um, I have a personal attachment to it because when my dad came to visit, he was telling me this story about how 23 years ago he, he and my mom stayed there um, when she was pregnant with me, and the, he pointed at the room that they stayed in. He was like, "This this temple is part of the reason that you got your name." Surfing was a lot of fun and very surprising. I thought I would come to India to explore Carnatic music, and instead I started going surfing. And so after work, my co-worker Murthy, who used to be a fisherman, and he's also the surfing god of Kovala, Tamil Nadu, uh, would take me surfing after work. But I never got to stand up. Crouch slash stand for a few seconds and then I'd fall off the surfboard. But it was a great way to meet all of these fishermen and fishing friends. And they've actually become some of my best friends in India and I hope to keep reconnecting with them and help them build a surfing school in Kovala. Because of uh, the lack of things to do at night uh, to have a social life. You spend a lot of time with the same people every day and you create lots of very long lasting bonds. And I, I'd say that's the best thing I've taken away from Bihar. Two or three f friendships that will last a lifetime. You know, so when I was, uh, I guess, at my, at my placement in the mountains, um, I met a lot of people in my community and, you know, they're individuals who, you know, who have a very different background from myself, people who have been raised in a rural area. Um, I didn't think I had much commonality with them, but these are incredibly amazing people. And I just, I, I befriended all of them. So I think I'm just going to keep in contact with all of them at this point. We're already exchanging emails and, you know, I'm just, I, just, I just hope to keep that up. I think Kerala was probably my favorite place that like I would really not want to have missed. Um, fortunately, midpoint there, so that helps. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kerala is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, Munar, in particular. I guess I've just never been any place like that before. Like there's nothing like that in the U.S. It's up in the mountains. There's tea plantations everywhere. It's really peaceful and calm, and it's not quite as touristy or as as sort of the more well-known spots that you might have heard about back at home. I mean, I liked I liked Humpy for what it was, which was like a, a nice schooling in kind of a Mughal period Indian history that wasn't really touched in most of the books that I had read. And so I really like history, and so for me it was like a really interesting example of a part of India. That, I didn't know anything about the South. When I read about India, 90% of every book that I read is about the North. And so everything about Karnataka, Kerala, and... Um, and even down in uh, Tamil Nadu, it was it was important to go visit those places. And I stopped in all three, and it was it was like a good experience. So I would definitely, if you're in the north, I would visit the south because it's not easy to get to, but it's worth it. I think one of the biggest lessons that it took me almost a whole time to learn was that one of the best things about this experience was all the. Um, random experiences that you have and how important it is to really give in to those things. There were so many times where somebody invited me to come do something and, and maybe my instinct was it was an inopportune hour or I really wasn't feeling up to it and there were many months where I would say no. I would go with my instinct and I would say no and there was a point where I realized that I was really missing out and that, that my time here was really limited and so I started giving in to those things. Maybe it wasn't entirely comfortable, maybe it wasn't the right timing, maybe I wasn't really in the right mood, but I never regretted taking an opportunity to go to someone's house for a chai or to stay a little bit longer chatting with a friend when I felt my Western mind wanted me to hurry up and move on to that next thing. But I never regretted hanging out for that extra 20 minutes and having another chai. Um, so I think just giving in and really going with the flow and experiencing everything there is to experience here. I'm sure a lot, I know that a lot of fellows this year promised to write blogs and not all of us did. I kept a blog but I posted it about five times. Uh, I would love to have written in my blog a lot more or to have just written a lot more and chronicled a lot more. Um, so that would be the advice, document, chronicle.
Um, go visit as many fellows as you can. AF has connections with a bunch of awesome organizations, and you should check out as many of them as you possibly can. Visiting fellows is a great way to do that. So I think uh, in the U.S. we have a tendency, so I come from a business background, um, and I think we have a tendency to want to hit the ground running. Um, I think it's really important, um, and I found that a lot of the other fellows who, had, who um, experienced a similar situation to me as, um, as in they went into their NGO and for the first month they just observed what was happening and they built relationships and talked with all of their colleagues and peers and the community members. Um, they realized what the needs were and where their skill sets could align best with what the needs of the NGO were. Um, and they were able to have a more fulfilling and meaningful experience. Um, I think, I, I mentioned this before, listening to people and instead of just coming in and watching, you actually have to come like have a conversation, communicate with people above and below you. And especially in my organization, having sort of um, humbleness about the people you're working with, getting to know them, and then motivating them in a very <laughs> subtle way. Actually, like most of us coming into this fellowship, I really like things to progress quickly, and I came in with a set of objectives and goals that I wanted to meet very quickly. And um, what I found, obviously, as a lot of us have talked about, is that India works at a different pace. So adjusting to that pace and finding ways to constructively use my time, even when I had lags, was the most helpful for me. So, for example, um, I had to wait for a translator a lot of times, and the translators would have to be reliant on a bus pass in order to get to me. So a lot of times I would literally be waiting on the sidewalk for about three hours for somebody. So I would go, I would get a lime juice, I would take out my book on HIV AIDS, and I would just learn more about how HIV AIDS impacts people in India. So just finding constructive ways to use that downtime. You know, Yochne Mart Biko, most important thing, the Kannada classes, language classes, are Toko Biko. Yakandre, Salpa, Yella easy agate. Yella salis agate. You know, Kannada Yoches Mari, Adu Chanak Madak, Matadeke, Aita Andre, Yella Rojate, Chanak Matadira. Adu Kelsa, salis agate. That means if you learn a good language, all your work will be easy. You have to learn the local language. Um, and if everyone doing the fellowship can't be too rigid in their expectations. I think the best thing that I did was come with very low expectations, um, in the sense that I kept my options really open, because um, every day was different. Everything changed within like you know the first week, the first month, and um, if you can run with the punches, run with the blows, then I think you're going to have a great year. My pieces of advice to you for this year are wear sunscreen, drink lots of water, and remember to have fun because there will be moments in this fellowship that will be incredibly stressful and frustrating, but it's also going to be one of the most rewarding experiences you will ever have. So please just take it easy when you need to and remind yourself of why you went there and you know all of the great things that you're going to do. So my favorite part of my weekly routine was every Friday I would buy flowers for my hair. In South India they have beautiful jasmine flowers that every woman puts in her hair and it's the ultimate sign of femininity and it smells amazing. So every Friday I got to partake in that and I recommend that you do as well. Actually, so my, my favorite thing, we, I have a shared Jeep that used to take me to work, but the most special part was the days I didn't go in the Jeep because I would take the shared rickshaws and there you'd be sitting with all of the villagers that you know didn't have access to Jeeps and you'd be carrying their babies that are wearing these bright clothings and earrings larger than I could ever wear. Um, the women have bracelets from here all the way up to here. And so I mean, it was a nice ride and everyone asks you where you're from, people talk to you, you're engaging and interacting with the communities that maybe you otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to. My favorite food was the alu parantas, which Mrs. Joshi made me every single Sunday. I lived above my NGO and the head of my NGO's wife was like a mother to me. And so every Sunday she would bring me alu parantas, mango pickles, and lots and lots of chai. So I'd have to say I'm I'm going to miss her all the which were not only made with potatoes but were made with lots of love. My one piece of advice would be to eat yogurt every day.
eating yogurt will keep you healthy, I promise. But the best way is to make it at home. And Pooja and I, a former AIF fellow from my first year, made a video on how to make yogurt or curd. So check out Fliptastic's film's video on how to make yogurt, and I promise you, you'll be healthy. And if you're not healthy, you can't do your work on the fellowship. So eat a lot of yogurt. It's delicious. So, Chalte Chalte, Meri Egeet Yaad Rakhna would mean um, as you're traveling, uh, remember the song of mine. Um, Kabi Alvi Da Na means never say goodbye. So as you're continuing on, as you're traveling, never say goodbye. When you're laughing, when you're crying, um, never say goodbye. Firmilinge. <laughs> <laughs>